All right guys, welcome back to my very favorite video of the year, my annual Thanksgiving dinner. Let's get started. You know, if all else fails, we're gonna get out a loaf of bread and have bread and butter. Because I don't want crunchy onions in my stuffing. No thank you. I was just thinking this morning, this is like what I always wanted when I was a kid. I guess that was like the one new thing that I tried. Ooh, so adventurous. <laughs> So this year is a little bit weird in that I was super busy this week and I also had to go have a procedure done today, a medical procedure. So I'm not super feeling 100%, but you know what? The show must go on and we gotta cook and I love doing it anyway, so here we are. So I have already made my meal plan. The best thing about having meal planners is that you can actually go back and see what you had previous years <laughs> for Thanksgiving to make sure that you don't forget anything. I was also going back and looking at some of my previous Thanksgiving videos on my channel. I wanna say this is like my fifth or sixth year doing this video here on YouTube. So I actually created a playlist and I'll link that down below. If you want even more Thanksgiving inspiration, you can just go watch all of the videos. But I love cooking. I love being in my kitchen and cooking things from scratch. And so I always like to take you guys along with me. Of course, I don't cook everything myself. We have family and they bring things as well. So here is what we are planning on today. I am also gonna share a grocery haul with you. Um, I decided not to go in the store for the main part of my shopping this year because I was, I, I didn't really have a whole lot of time. This week I got some stuff delivered and stuff, some stuff Adam and I actually went into the store and got earlier this week, but I'll show you that here in a second. This is the plan. So for appetizers, um, we are gonna have deviled eggs, little smokies. Um, Adam's mom is bringing the deviled eggs. My sister is bringing little smokies. I am also going to make kind of like a, a, a veggie and cheese and cracker tray. I wanna make a cheese ball and some veggies and dip. Adam's aunt is gonna bring fruit salad. And then I also always love to have both homemade cranberry sauce and canned cranberry sauce in case you know different people like different things. And then I'm also making rolls. So that's another thing that I did earlier this week is I went ahead and got all of my Thanksgiving recipes out of my recipe binder and I've set those aside so those are ready to go side dishes, which arguably is the most important part of Thanksgiving. Hello, can I get an amen? Okay, I am making mashed potatoes. I usually make those in the Instant Pot, which is super easy because it helps keep the mashed potatoes warm and then you don't have to worry about them getting cold. Kira also requested that I make mac and cheese, which I thought was odd. She normally doesn't request that, but I'm also gonna make that in the Instant Pot. I actually have a really good recipe for Instant Pot mac and cheese. We have green bean casserole, corn casserole, which my sister is bringing. We are gonna make some homemade uh, sausage dressing or stuffing, whatever you call it. I love using Ina Garten's um, sausage dressing recipe. I've used it for years. It's my very favorite one. And then I also usually make stovetop dressing in case, or stuffing in case people like that because some people prefer just the plain Jane stovetop, which I totally get. And then I also um, usually make sweet potatoes. So I have all of the ingredients for that. This year I'm going to make my turkey in the oven with my uh, recipe that I always use, which is Martha Stewart's recipe for roast turkey and turkey brine. So we're gonna go ahead and put the turkey in the brine this evening. I'm gonna obviously make gravy to go with the turkey and mashed potatoes. And then Adam is gonna be smoking the ham. So we went and got a spiral cut ham. He actually made today some homemade barbecue sauce and some homemade like maple bourbon glaze to go on top of the ham while he's smoking it. So he's taking care of that. For dessert, we're planning on pumpkin pie, of course. Adam's mom is gonna bring a cake. And then I am making mint chocolate brownies, which is another thing that both of my kids requested. They love this recipe. It's actually a recipe that was passed down to me by my mom and I love making them. You definitely have to make them the night before because they do have to set up in the fridge. And then I got some, I went ahead and got some chips for the kids um, just to snack on because you know, kids love chips. <laughs> and then um, for drinks, we're just gonna do soda and sparkling water and lemonade. 
but I think that's it. So I went ahead and got some of my supplies out that I normally, you know, only use at Thanksgiving. So I'll show you those and I'm gonna share my grocery. Okay, so you guys, Brooklinen is sponsoring today's video and I'm super excited because I just got these new sheets from them. I've already washed them and we've slept on them a couple of times now, but isn't this pattern so fun? And then I also got this um, duvet cover. I love it. These sheets are my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite sheets. I have found that it's super important to invest in sheets that are not going to only last a long time, but also through frequent washes. These sheets actually get softer with each wash. I really wanted to refresh my bedroom for the winter season. So whether you choose one of Brooklinen's limited edition seasonal colors or something a little more classic, changing up your bedding is the perfect way to embrace the fall and winter season. I love Brooklinen sheets. In fact, all of us in our household have these on our bed. My husband and I, my son and my daughter, and these are the best sheets I have ever slept on. They are so awesome. Brooklyn and sheets are tried and true. They actually have over 100,000 five-star reviews more than any other online bedding company. And the sheets don't just feel great, but they look great too. You can actually mix and match over 20 plus colors and patterns. Making your bedroom beautiful is honestly the ultimate form of self-care. Instead of buying individual items you can actually save 25% by purchasing a hardcore bundle which includes a core sheet set extra pillowcases and a duvet cover this is what I got and the best-selling Lux sateen sheets are the ultimate bedding upgrade these sheets are sateen and they are usually more tightly woven and heavier in weight than per kill making them warmer and buttery soft ideal for year-round comfort Right now, Brooklinen is having their Black Friday sale and all Brooklinen items are 25% off, so you have to hurry. You can save up to 40% when buying their bundles, like the one that I got, because you can stack their bundle deals with their Black Friday deal. This is your time to finally refresh your bedding or get a jump start on your holiday shopping. So check out the link in the description box below to get your very own Brooklinen sheets. I know you guys are gonna love them. I highly recommend the sets because you also get the duvet cover. If you've never slept with a comforter and a duvet cover, it's like it's like a luxury experience. You, you look forward to getting into bed every night. So I highly recommend their sheet sets. Okay, and then as far as things that I had to order online and then things that I get out each year to use, this first one is my Cuisinart roasting pan. I'll link this down below. I actually picked this up on Amazon. Um, I really like it because it has the rack. So the turkey kind of like sits up off the bottom of the pan and then you can like baste it as it's cooking. Um, and then you can actually put this on top of the stove also and make your gravy out of it if you want to. Um, I normally make my gravy separate with stock that I use from the giblets. Giblets, how do you say it? I don't know. <laughs> so I got that out. This is uh, the gravy boat that I think I told you guys about this last year. So I got this many, many years ago, probably 20 years ago at this point um, at... Kmart, which I don't think Kmart is any longer in the States, but this is a Martha Stewart everyday brand. And I bought this gravy boat on clearance when Adam and I lived in an apartment. This is before we were married. Our very first Thanksgiving, I tried to cook Thanksgiving dinner. The turkey was raw. It was a disaster, but I still have this gravy boat and I get it out every year. And it just reminds me of that time. <laughs> in my life and how far I've come in my home cooking journey. So if you too have tried to make a turkey and it was raw, just keep persevering. You'll get it eventually. These little um, turkey salt and pepper shakers, I love getting these out every year. Um, I got these from Sur La Table, I believe, when they were on clearance one year. And I don't know, they just make me happy to get them out every year for Thanksgiving, so I grabbed those out of the cupboard. And then I actually had the forethought this year to order some things ahead of time so that I wouldn't be stuck without them like I was the last couple years. Um, I got some cheesecloth. The turkey recipe that I use um, uses this. And then also these Ziploc big bags. If you try to get these at Walmart the week of Thanksgiving, you will not be able to get them because people are using them to obviously brine their turkeys. Um, and so I was able to actually get these last week. You can also brine your turkey in a five gallon bucket, which I have done before, but it is super convenient to do in the bag. I think it's just a lot easier to handle. Um, and so, yeah, basically you put your 
turkey and the brine right in there. I put it in the roasting pan and then I stick it out in the refrigerator in the garage overnight. There's three of these in here, so actually I should have enough for <laughs> the next couple years of brining turkeys. I'm glad that I did not order any um, Thanksgiving napkins or plates because I have plenty from last year. So we're gonna go ahead and use those. Um, and then I did not buy paper plates for the actual Thanksgiving dinner. We'll actually use regular plates for that. And then this is like a wood kind of like charcuterie board that I got from Walmart a few years ago. So I got this to make my, I got this out to make my um, meat and cheese board on. I just realized that I have not really decorated for Thanksgiving. So if we have time to do that tomorrow, um, I, we will do that in the morning. Um, before everybody gets here because I think that would be nice. Not necessary, but nice. Okay, so when you're cooking a big meal, you always wanna start with what is gonna take the longest. So if you need to like write it and plan it out, totally do that. I am gonna go ahead and rinse out my sink because I'm gonna put the turkey in here and we're gonna give it a good rinse and we're gonna go ahead and get it into the brine. Okay, so like I said, I normally like to buy a very large turkey on purpose because number one, who wants to run out of turkey on Thanksgiving? And number two, um, I just want a lot of leftover turkey because it's good for sandwiches, it's good for hot turkey sandwiches, it's good for turkey rice soup, and you can give a lot to your family when they go home. Okay, so, this says approximate roasting times uh, four and a half to five hours. So if I want, let's think about this. So if I want the turkey to be done at, let's say 11.30, what's 11 minus five? Six. So that means I probably need to get this in the oven at 6.30. Okay. We will have a bright and early morning together. Not that early, could be worse. My dogs are like standing here as if any of this is gonna be for them at this point. <laughs> okay, so all I'm doing is just rinsing the turkey off with cold water. And typically in the inside the turkey cavity will be the neck and there will be normally a bag of giblets in there. Oh, nope, they're in the other end. I see them, they're in a little bag. Okay, we got them, don't worry. Okay, I do have something to confess, and that is that the turkey is actually supposed to be in the brine for 24 hours. However, I don't have 24 hours, I have about 12 hours, <laughs> which is fine. Um, you know, it's better than it's better than not brining it all together, and it's gonna, it's gonna be very flavorful, you'll see. So it'll it'll totally be fine. Okay, so I got my turkey. I, I'm just draining the water out of it. I'm gonna put it in my roasting pan. Okay, and then let me, I'm gonna get a little container here to put my giblets. I, is it giblets or giblets? Who the F knows? I always say giblets, am I wrong? Okay, neck and that. Giblet, giblet. Wash hands, wash your sink. You don't get salmonella, okay? My first ever video that went viral on YouTube and got over a million views, I cooked chicken and I did not wash the chicken. And let me tell you, if people have opinions about anything, it's about washing chicken. There were people that were extremely mad that I did not wash my chicken. I, that's just not something that I was ever taught to do or ever grew up doing. Um, now, since then, I ha there have been times where I have ri rinsed my chicken before. So, I may be somewhat of a chicken washing convert. A little bit, not all the time. It depends on the chicken. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put the turkey brine together. I will link all of these recipes down below. This one is from Martha Stewart. And in my stock pot here, I've got one quart of water. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on. And to that, I'm gonna add one and a half cups of kosher salt. I have had the hardest time getting kosher salt at my local stores in town. I actually had to order this on Amazon. 
Okay, and then we need six bay leaves, two tablespoons of whole coriander seeds. This is another thing I had to buy on Amazon. I, I, well, I probably, mm, I don't know if I've been able to find coriander seeds here before in uh, BFP, Iowa. The odds are not good that I would be able to find them. One tablespoon of dried juniper berries. I know for certain. These smell good. Have you ever bought these? I mean, this is the only recipe I use them for. And actually, I don't think I've ever used them because I've never had the foresight to actually order them. And so we're using them this year. They smell very fruity and delicious. Another thing that I would never be able to find in my town ever. Two tablespoons of whole black peppercorns. I do, I do have that. <laughs> One tablespoon of fennel seeds. Always reminds me of sausage. One teaspoon of mustard seeds. You know, I mm, I could probably find mustard seeds here, but I just went ahead and ordered these online as well. Well, it's not it, but that's it for now. This is basically like the salty part of the brine. We're gonna mix this with six cups of cold water so that it cools off and then we can pour it over the turkey. The other thing that this calls for is one bottle of wine, dry wet wine, two onions, sliced, six garlic cloves, and fresh thyme. Here's what the brine concentrate looks like. I really do recommend this recipe. Like I said, I've been using it for years and it always turns out great. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and throw in the thyme. We've got the onions in there. The salt is dissolved. It smells delicious. I'm cooling down the brine with some ice and some cold water, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw my garlic in there, and then I'll pour this over the turkey. All right, so here is our turkey. Um, basically, I just kind of like bunched the top of this bag up and um, secured it with a rubber band because the top is like way <laughs> too tall for what I need. And I tried to like kind of secure it as tight as I could because I want to make sure that obviously the meat, you know, a lot of the meat comes in contact with the brine. I may, so I'm going to set this in the fridge now and I may in a couple hours try to flip it. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, well, actually, I'm kind of thinking, should I flip it now? Because I want, you really want the breast to get brine the most. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I flipped it over. I feel much better about that. All right, I'm going to stick this in the fridge. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I just realized I forgot to put the wine in the turkey brine. So let's open this bag back up for the second time. That is quite good, actually. Okay. Glug, glug, glug. Okay, we're closing this for the third and final time. And then this turkey will be put to bed. And we'll see it in the morning. So next let's do the turkey gravy. This is an Alton Brown recipe. So for this, I obviously need the neck and the giblets. And then it says the backbone. I obviously did not take my backbone of the turkey, so that is not getting uh, put in here but I have made this many times and it turns out fine so I need one onion one carrot and one stalk of celery let me get that before we start So I rinsed out the pot I used to make the brine and we're gonna use this to make the stock for the gravy. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of avocado oil in the bottom. Okay, let's add the turkey neck. Okay, so this is making quite a mess. I've got my exhaust fan on and I've got the turkey neck in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add my veggies. So I've got carrot, onion, celery, and a few cloves of garlic. So this has been sauteing for a little bit and I am going to pour in six cups of cold water. 
Okay, so I don't really think I explained this like very successfully before, but essentially what we're doing is we're making a turkey stock out of the neck and the giblets, and then um, we'll use that to make the gravy tomorrow. So I've got my water in here. I've got all my veggies and my turkey. I also put some um, salt in there. And then we need a teaspoon of black peppercorns, one bay leaf. This is what I needed the other fresh herbs for. I couldn't remember. Okay, so one, I guess it says one sprig of rosemary and I'll add a couple sprigs of thyme. So as inspiration, I was actually just watching last year's cook with me. Thanksgiving cook with me because I was I don't know I was just looking at my list and I'm like am I forgetting anything I feel like I'm forgetting something I'm probably not forgetting something I don't know it's it's totally possible I mean I forgot to do half the things with the brine so okay so this seems like to me it's not enough water so I think I'm gonna add a couple more cups of water and then basically we'll bring this to a boil and let it simmer until it makes like a really rich stock the recipe says one and a half hours, I, I'm thinking it normally doesn't take that long, we'll see. Okay, so here is the chocolate mint brownie recipe that I'm making, this uh, is recipe of my mom's, who is no longer with us, so I don't know, it just always reminds me of her when I make it, and these are super delicious. So, I will, obviously I don't have a link to this recipe, so I'll type it out down below. In my bowl here, I've just got one stick of softened butter, and I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup of granulated sugar to that. And then I'm just gonna use my hand mixer to beat this up. Well, it would help if I plugged it in, hello. Okay, we're gonna add four eggs. Actually, we need to add two at a time and then mix. Okay, so this recipe is kind of old and it calls for one can of Hershey's syrup. Um, I can no longer find cans of Hershey's syrup. So every time I make this, I just use a bottle of, like just the regular size bottle of Hershey's syrup. I measured it this time. It does come out to about one and a half cups. So we're gonna add that. Okay, and then we need one and a quarter cups of flour and that is it. Kind of an interesting recipe, no baking soda or baking powder or anything. I always like to bake these brownies in a metal pan. Don't ask me why, it's just always what I do and they turn out fine. So um, I have some Baker's Joy here. I'm just gonna spray this pan. If you're not familiar with Baker's Joy, it is a cooking spray that has flour in it. So it's really good for baking. I'm sure you don't have to do this, but I do like to line my brownie pan with um, parchment paper, just because if these brownies stick, there's gonna be no point <laughs> to making them. Then I'll spray this paper. And here is our brownie batter. Okay, and this is a pretty thin layer of brownie because we're going to frost it with a mint frosting and then we're gonna glaze it with chocolate on top so it has a couple more layers. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven for how long? I'm going to put it in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. So this is the recipe that I'm going to use for the mac and cheese. Now I'm not gonna put broccoli in it, but I have made this before in the Instant Pot and it turns out great. So for this I need 12 ounces of extra sharp cheddar grated. And then I also need some grated cheddar cheese for the cheese ball. This cheese ball recipe is from a Cook's Country magazine in 2011. It's like my favorite cheese ball recipe. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just grate all of the cheese that I need for both of those with my food processor. I've got my food processor here. This is, this thing is a workhorse. It is a 14 cup Cuisinart food processor. And anytime anyone asks me, what kind of food processor should I get? I always recommend this one because they will literally last you a lifetime. So um, I've got the, basically the shredding blade on here, which looks like this. This also comes with a slicing blade. So it's just super convenient to shred cheese um, like this. So all you have to do 
is put your cheese in the top here. And what I'm gonna do is shred up the cheese for the mac and cheese first, and then I'll just put that in a little baggie and it'll be ready to go in the fridge for tomorrow. Sometimes you'll get a piece like stuck in there like that, which honestly really isn't that big of a deal because it's all gonna melt together anyway. All right, so for the cheese ball, we need two cups of sh sharp shredded cheddar cheese. And what's nice about this recipe is that it also calls to make it in a food processor. So we're only gonna have to dirty it once. I'm gonna shred the cheese into the bowl here. Okay, and then we just need to replace this with the regular blade. To my shredded cheese, I'm adding eight ounces of regular cream cheese. I know you guys like to see the doggies. Here, you want a piece of cheese? Nope, you gotta sit. I gotta, I gotta split it between you, okay? Can you sit? Oh, good boys, look at that. We're gonna add two tablespoons of mayo, one tablespoon of Worcestershire. Worcestershire, I'm gonna piss everybody off the way I say Worcestershire. I don't have any of the pre-minced garlic on hand, so I just have about one clove of garlic. I'm putting it through my garlic press. This is an OXO garlic press. I do highly recommend this one. You guys know my love for OXO kitchen products. Definitely knows uh, no bounds. We're adding one fourth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And that is it. We will roll this in some almonds, but let's process this. So here's what it looks like when you're done. It, it basically looks like a cheese spread, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and taste this because I wanna make sure it doesn't need salt or anything like that. Um, and then you, I was gonna say also, if you don't have a food processor, you can totally still make cheese balls. I did it for years before I had a proper food processor. I would just mix everything together in a bowl. Obviously you won't be able to get kind of your cheese as like chopped up and smooth as this, um, but you can still, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. All right, if you've never made a cheese ball before, here's how you do it. Basically, what you're gonna do is you are going to form this into a ball in saran wrap. And that is so that it can be formed and refrigerated so that then you can roll it in nuts or bacon or really whatever you want. And then that. So I'll just, basically I have a rubber spatula I'm gonna scrape the blade off. I'm just gonna kind of put all of the cheese right there in the middle. Why are cheese balls so delicious? I don't know. I don't make the rules. I'm just thinking, I could do a whole video about cheese balls. Who would watch that though? I mean, I feel like not a lot of people would watch that. I could, I could be surprised though, you know? You never know which video is gonna be a banger. Cheese ball video just might be it. That cayenne pepper just gives like the right amount of kick. Like it's not, spicy it's just you can just taste it a little bit okay so now what you want to do is basically kind of bring up your saran wrap into a little I don't know like a satchel and then you're gonna squeeze it down into there and this is this isn't gonna be perfect right we don't we're not we're not about perfection here but then you just twist it and you fold it over and you shape it okay and then this is how and it's fine if it, you know if it's lumpy under the bottom we don't care about that uh we're just gonna put it like this on a plate and we're gonna refrigerate it and tomorrow morning what we can do then is toast some almonds roll it in the almonds and then you can have this with crackers now i will say with cheese balls when you take them out of the fridge at first obviously they're very hard so you kind of want to let them sit out for like an hour or so before your guests arrive look at that all right, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do next is the cranberry sauce. I'm just waiting for the brownies com to come out of the oven. They're almost done. This is the recipe I use for, it says perfect cranberry sauce. It's from Food Network Kitchens. It's very, very simple. Um, I just checked on my turkey stock. Seems to be doing very well. I'll probably let that simmer for another, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. This is 12 ounces of cranberries that I washed up. And I'm gonna reserve half a cup of these. Um, that way I can kind of mix them in 
at the end just so we'll have like some whole berries in there. Okay, so to the cranberries, I'm gonna turn this on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup of plain white sugar, two tablespoons of water, and then I'm just gonna peel the zest off of this orange and add that as well. And then since I have the orange, what I'll usually do is just squeeze the remainder of the orange into the um, cranberries just to add a little bit more of that orange flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this down to low heat and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Okay, so I transferred the cranberry sauce to a bowl, it's done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that in the fridge. Good morning, friends. Okay, it is 6.30 on Thanksgiving morning. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, so I just got the turkey and the brine out of the fridge, so we need to get that in the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the turkey out of the brine and rinse it off. Okay, so I have my turkey on my roasting rack in the pan. I need to get some twine. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to sprinkle the inside of the turkey with salt and pepper. I did go ahead and leave some of the um, onions and time in there because it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, and then you want to fold the wing tips under the turkey. They don't they don't want to fold. <laughs> come on, come on baby. I don't, have time. I don't have time for you. Okay. Okay, and then if you tie the wings together in a bow that will be easier to remove later. It's almost too big for my pan here. Okay, now I'm gonna rub this with softened butter. Okay, so in this pan, I've got some white wine and some butter melted together. I'm gonna place my cheesecloth in there. This is what's gonna help make the skin crispy. Okay, so the turkey goes in the oven. I took the cheesecloth out and put it over the breast because that's the part we want to brown. This will go in the oven at 450 degrees for 30 minutes and then we'll turn the oven temperature down, leave it in there for about five hours and baste it every half hour. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish the brownies. So again, I've got my first layer here that I made last night. We're gonna make the mint frosting layer. So I've got a, a, a one stick of butter in my bowl. Okay, I'm gonna beat this up just a bit. I'm adding two cups of powdered sugar. Mix very slowly. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of milk. Okay, you may have to add a little bit more milk. It just kind of depends on the consistency. All right, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of peppermint extract. And then I typically add green food coloring because, you know, it's a mint. <laughs> so I have this gel food coloring. We're gonna see if that's enough. So we're gonna add the frosting to here. You could totally do red too if you wanted to, like for Christmas, that would be fun. Okay, and then you just wanna carefully spread this out as evenly as you can. A, um, an offset spatula makes this super easy. So if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. It makes spreading things like frosting it's so much easier. It's kinda hard to judge, but you wanna try to spread it as, in as evenly of a layer as possible because we're gonna put a layer of chocolate over this. This is the point where I realized that my um, oven is not level because <laughs> the brownies are like a little bit slanted in the pan. Funny. Frosting for these brownies is super easy or the chocolate glaze. So one cup of chocolate chips and then six tablespoons of butter. We're gonna melt this in the microwave and stir it every so often. So the turkey has been in the oven for 30 minutes. I'm 
I've got my butter and my wine here. I'm just gonna baste this. Why does the top of the turkey look like that? We call those every year. It has cheesecloth on it. Oh! No, actually, this is the first time I've ever done that. But, okay. Which makes sense, because that will hold moisture up on top of it. Okay, I'll put this back in the oven. I'm going to turn it down to 350 degrees and bake it for another three hours. Okay, so this this chocolate and butter kind of looks like it won't combine, but it will. So you basically just have to stir it after it's melted until it comes together. All right, so you just wanna pour the melted chocolate over the frosting, and then we'll spread it out with the offset spatula. Brownies are done. These need to go into the refrigerator to set up, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop them in there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and toast the almonds for the cheese balls, so I'm just, I just have half a cup of almonds in a skillet here. Make sure you watch them because they can burn quickly. And then I'm gonna make some sour cream dip for my veggies. So uh, I'm gonna double this recipe. It calls for three quarters of a cup of sour cream. I actually have a three quarters of a cup measuring cup that I got from Timu. How cool is that? All right, I just added six tablespoons of mayo. We're gonna add one teaspoon of dried dill, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, salt and pepper, Okay, and then we need two tablespoons of minced chives. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mix this up. I've never made this recipe before. It's from spendwithpennies.com. Um, I don't know how it can be bad. I just thought I would make some homemade dip rather than from a mix. Okay, so here is our cheese ball that we made last night. So I have cooled the toasted almonds and I'm gonna go ahead and roll the cheese ball in those. You really do kind of have to press the nuts into here. So I kind of shaped it with my hands so it was a little bit more uniformly round and I'm just gonna transfer it to this container so I can put it back in the fridge until it's time to get back out again. Okay, so we need 16 cups of bread cubes for the sausage and herb stuffing. This is the Einergarten recipe that I use. Um, I think this loaf of bread will probably be enough, but in case it's not, I also have some regular bread I can supplement with. So I'm just gonna cut this into about one inch cubes. Be very careful with serrated knives. I almost think that they are more dangerous than regular knives just because of the sawing motion. There was one year where I, I cannot remember what I was cutting, if I was cutting bread or something else, but I actually sliced my finger <laughs> with, with a serrated knife and I had to go to the emergency room and get stitches in the middle of cooking a holiday dinner. It was not, not a fun time. So I did um, supplement with just a little bit of wheat bread, which is totally fine. We need 16 cups total. I'm gonna put these out on the biggest baking sheet that I have and bake these in the oven for, I don't know, about seven to 10 minutes until they get very dry. So I just went upstairs and took a shower, got myself looking presentable for the day. I can tell you, once everyone leaves today, I will be taking a nap. I think my sister's gonna come over early and help me with some stuff. Um, and I need to get started on the rolls so those can start rising. I haven't made homemade rolls for Thanksgiving in a while. They taste very delicious, but it's kind of a lot of work. So I'm kind of wondering why I decided um, to do this. <laughs> but alas, here we are. 
So the turkey has been in the oven for a little less than three hours. I'm gonna pour the last remaining a bit of wine and butter mixture over the cheesecloth. I'm gonna put it back in for another half hour and then we will remove the cheesecloth and let it cook the rest of the way. So I'm gonna use my stand mixer for the rolls. This is the recipe that I am using and have used in the past. There's another recipe that I've used that's in one of my Taste of Home cookbooks, but this is the one I pulled out today. So Parker House Rolls from The Recipe Critic. So I need some warm milk and some warm water. Half a cup of warm water. I'm also gonna put some milk in this and warm it up in the microwave. We're gonna add four uh, tablespoons of sugar. By the way, I'm doubling this recipe so we can ensure that we have enough rolls. We need two packs of active dry yeast. Add the warm milk. I'm gonna mix this up. And then we're just gonna let this sit for five to 10 minutes to let the yeast proof. All right, not gonna lie, one of my favorite things about the holidays is getting out this giant ass bowl and making my stuffing in it. So I actually got this on Amazon several years ago because I didn't have a bowl this big. So I am going to put my dried bread cubes in there. And I should be able to reuse this um, big pan for the dinner rolls, so I think I'll just set that aside. So the recipe that I use for the sweet potato casserole is, I believe it's from New York Times, and it calls to bake the potatoes in the oven, the sweet potatoes, however, this is, these sweet potatoes are so large that I, I fear it's gonna take way too long. If I was gonna bake them, I should have done it way ahead of time. Um, so I think I did this last year too. I'm just gonna cut them up and boil them until they're tender with some salted water and that should work just fine. Um, another plug for OXO, my peeler. I love this peeler. It's super inexpensive on Amazon. I think I mentioned this last night, but any of the cooking tools and stuff that I use in today's video, I'll try and link them. Um, all in the description box below. If I happen to miss one, just let me know in the comments and I will link it for you. And that's funny because when I actually bought this peeler, um, what, like a bunch of the reviews were like one and two star reviews because they said it was too sharp. <laughs> like, I'm like, can a peeler be too sharp? Like, I mean, isn't that kind of the point is to make peeling things very easy? Okay, my yeast. That's my yeast. You know when you're peeling like, uh, you know, butternut squash or something like that with like a super tough skin, this peeler makes it super duper easy. And you know, I'm kind of weird. I know that, we've already established that, but I actually like peeling potatoes. I'm gonna, pe I'm gonna peel the potatoes for the mashed potatoes here in a little bit too. I need to get my Instant Pots out for the mac and cheese and the mashed potatoes. All right, back to the rolls. If it seems like I'm hopping around on different things, it's because I am. This is, this is the reality of cooking a large dinner. So I am gonna add one stick. I keep wanting to say one cup. One stick of butter is half a cup. I'm adding one stick of softened butter and two eggs and I'm gonna mix this up. While this is running, I'm gonna add five to six cups of flour along with a couple of teaspoons of salt. When you're working with bread dough, a lot of times you kind of have to go by feel because a lot of it's gonna depend on how humid it is in your area, you know, what brand of flour that you're using. It's, it, it's, it's not always an exact science, so definitely, um, you know, use the recipe as a guide. I'm gonna scrape down the side. Oops, I scraped down the sides a little bit. Okay, so we want the dough to start like pulling away from the sides of the bowl, which means I'm probably gonna use closer to six cups or maybe even a little bit more. Okay, so let's dust the counter. But I need to knead it a little bit until it's soft. Okay, that feels good. I mean, it's, yeah, that, that's good, okay. 
Okay, I'm not so worried now. Not that I was worried because, you know, if all else fails, we're gonna get out a loaf of bread and have bread and butter <laughs> instead of rolls. <laughs> and obviously, well, that wouldn't be ideal, but you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world, right? I'll pop this back in here. So all I'm gonna do is just drizzle the top with a little bit of olive oil, put a towel over it, and then I'll leave it kind of on the back of the stove just to um, rise for about an hour. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut these sweet potatoes into large chunks, put them in a pot, and we'll boil these until they're tender. Good Lord. You know, I was just thinking about like, you ever feel like in your life sometimes things just happen so insidiously and gradually that you don't like take the time to realize how far you've actually come? I feel like sometimes that happens to me. Like I was just thinking this morning, this is like what I always wanted when I was a kid is like, or even like a young adult, you know, I was like, I don't have a big house. I want to cook Thanksgiving dinner. I want to have a lot of people over. I don't know, it's just always what I wanted to do. And it's like, now I'm doing it. <laughs> and I think sometimes we just don't stop to appreciate, you know, how far we've come and what we've really achieved in life. So if that's you too, I would encourage you today to think about that. How far you've come, what goals have you reached that Maybe it were so gradual and slow that you didn't even stop to think about them. Here's my doggies and one both side. You both side. So while the potatoes, sweet potatoes, I guess, are cooking, I'm gonna work on the sausage dressing. So I've got a big skillet here. I'm out. I've got olive oil, so it's okay. So we're gonna brown this sausage. Now, like I said before, this is just regular Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. Um, if you wanted to use sweet sausage, you could for this. If you wanted to use spicy or hot, you could. I just use the regular because the stuffing also has um, apples in it, which adds a little bit of sweetness. So I just tend to stick with the regular. So I chopped up two Granny Smith apples, two onions, and some celery. And I've just got these sauteing in a skillet with a stick of butter. I'm just using the same skillet that I cooked the sausage in. Okay, so I went ahead and transferred the sausage um, into the bread mixture here. I'm going to add in the veggie mixture. So this is the apple, onion, and celery, along with the butter and some herbs. Um, I like to really cook them until it's nice and tender, because I don't want crunchy onions in my stuffing. No thank you. All right, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of salt. Well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna add quite as much, because I need to add some broth to this. Some pepper. All right, so I chopped up two tablespoons of flat leaf parsley, so I'm gonna add that. The recipe calls for one cup of chicken broth, but I always have to add more, so I made up two cups, and we'll see if that's enough. Um, oh yeah, would you get the butter dish out of the top of that cabinet? It's on the top right, or top left, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the one closest to the stove, top left, it's white. Okay, so this is the dish that I'm gonna use for the stuffing. This is from Cirilla Taub. I like it because it's super deep for a nine by 13. And this does make quite a bit of dressing. So I'm gonna transfer this in there. I did have to add, I don't know, I would say maybe four or five cups of broth. That's normal, I always have to add way more than the recipe says. I just don't think that 
one cup of broth is obviously going to be enough for 16 cups of bread cubes. Okay, so then I just kind of spread this out and lightly pack it down. Okay, so I went ahead and drained my sweet potatoes, put them in the mixer here along with a stick of butter. So I'm just gonna mash those and we're gonna add one can of sweetened condensed milk and two eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna add a quarter cup of granulated sugar and then I'm adding some vanilla. So after the first rise was done on the rolls, you need to basically roll them out, cut them, put them on a baking sheet and let them rise again. So I went ahead and put my dough out on the counter and you want to roll it about a half inch thick, um, too much thicker than that. And the rolls won't probably cook all the way through. So I just have a regular circle cutter you could use a fluted one if you want to and then i'm just cutting those and putting them on a baking sheet you can see also that i am putting an indent in the center of them with my finger brush them with butter and you'll actually fold them in half before you let them rise for the second time so i also needed to finish cutting up all of the veggies for the veggie tray um, you saw me make the dip earlier so i cut up some carrots that I had in the fridge, some celery, we had some cheese and crackers on there. Um, I found some olives and pickles and just different things in the fridge to include on there. So that is what I did. Actually, my sister helped me put that together, which was super helpful to have her come over sort of at the 11th hour and help with all of the last minute stuff. I always find that, you know, I've been filming these videos for like five or six years now, and it's always super chaotic when everyone starts coming over and you have to kind of get everything <laughs> done. So Right now, Connor is helping me put together the um, Instant Pot mac and cheese. So I'm adding my noodles and some salt and some butter to the Instant Pot, pour in some water, and then basically you cook the noodles right in the Instant Pot. Um, they don't even need to be drained, and then you just kind of stir in the cheese at the end. So I poured my sweet potato mixture into a baking dish. I wish I would have had mini marshmallows, but my store was out of them, so they substituted the large marshmallows so i went ahead and put those on the top you just want to kind of do that for the last like 15 minutes of baking so that they will brown a little bit here is my turkey this actually turned out super great the skin was nice and crispy very flavorful like i said i highly recommend that cheesecloth recipe um, or method if you've never used that before i have found it is the one of the most fail-proof ways to make a turkey. I know that a lot of people say that they like to cook their turkey in one of the oven bags. I've actually never done that before, or if I have, it's been like a long, long time. I was actually going back and looking at last year's video and Adam smoked the turkey last year, um, which that's also good. And in fact, I might have him do that next year because it's just less that I have to do. And then you know, if he smokes a turkey and a ham, then basically I only have to worry about the sides. So I feel like that's a little less um, chaotic, but definitely recommend the brining method of turkey. It makes it turn out really well. So here is our spread. We had our um, homemade rolls that I made. We had plenty of those. The mashed potatoes we made in the Instant Pot, which was really convenient. Actually, at the end here, I'm gonna kind of give you a debrief of everything that we made and how everything turned out. Our mac and cheese, the original recipe calls for broccoli, like I said, but I did not include that. So just plain mac and cheese. Um, we had our uh, sweet potatoes, and then uh, my sister made corn casserole. There are tons of recipes out there for that corn casserole, but the one that I use is the Paula Deen recipe. We had our ham, our turkey gravy. My sister also brought little Smokies. Um, here is the turkey that actually turned out, like I said, super good. Adam's mom made um, chicken and noodles, which the kids love those, Kira especially. She also made some homemade applesauce and brought that some deviled eggs and then adam's aunt brought a fruit salad that has like marshmallows in it all the kids love that here is our ina garden recipe sausage stuffing that turned out really good and then the stovetop stuffing 
obviously a classic as well. And then this was a look at the meat and cheese tray that we made. So like I said, lots of veggies and cheese and our cheese ball. Highly recommend that dip recipe. It turned out really good. And here was my plate before I dug in. I had a little bit of everything and definitely could not eat it all. Um, but that's fine because I always think one of the best parts of Thanksgiving is the leftovers. In fact, sometimes I think the leftovers even taste better <laughs> than on the day of, especially if you're the one like cooking the meal. I find that you've probably tasted everything already by that point. Um, here were the leftover brownies that we had. Obviously, um, everyone loved those. And I'm just putting the leftovers into a container to put them into the fridge. And then... Um, we also had pumpkin pie, which I had to wait until later that evening to have a slice because I was so full, but I know pumpkin pie is like a hot take. Some people like it. Some people don't. I personally really love pumpkin pie and I prefer cool whip with mine rather than regular whipped cream. I just think it's like very nostalgic and quintessential. So that was super delicious. Okay. So it's several days after Thanksgiving now, and I kind of wanted to do a debrief on everything that I made and how it went. What I have found after years and years of filming these videos um, is that once people kind of start arriving on the day of Thanksgiving it starts getting really crazy and I forget to pick up my camera I'm not filming as much and so that part gets a little bit hectic which is exactly what happened this year so I kind of wanted to go through everything and um, I don't think that I actually I don't think that I made anything new this year usually I always try to make like at least one recipe new, but I knew I was gonna be um, busy the week before Thanksgiving and I was kind of stressed out anyway, so I decided not to, <laughs> to do that this year, which was totally fine. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go through the things that I made. So the cheese ball, I really love this recipe. I haven't made it in quite a while um, and it's really good. So definitely recommend this for sure. Also that dip that I made to go with the veggies like the sour cream and mayo and chive dip, that was also really good. I will definitely be making that again. I guess that was like the one new thing that I tried. Ooh, so adventurous. <laughs> okay, so the rolls. Um, every year that I have made homemade rolls, I always get a lot of compliments on them but I still am not convinced that the work is worth it, especially since with rolls, you have to do kind of like a lot at the last minute, um, at meaning like the morning of, it's, it's kind of hard to like prep it overnight, obviously, because you have to let it rise right before you bake it. I still am convinced that Rhodes rolls are just as good as homemade. However, I will say that this particular recipe that I used for the um, Parker House rolls from the Recipe Critic, I don't actually think this is my favorite roll recipe. The one that I really like the most is in um, one of my Taste of Home cookbooks. So if I make those again, I will probably go to that recipe. Okay, cranberry sauce. Um, I always make the one from Food Network. I make the uh, homemade cranberry sauce and then we have the jelly cranberry sauce as well. Nothing to complain about there. Okay, mashed potatoes. So I think with the mashed potatoes, we actually made them in the Instant Pot, which I always say is super convenient, obviously, because um, you can keep them warm. And my sister actually made those, but I think we actually put too many potatoes in the pot because some of them, I don't wanna say they burned, but they got like brown. Um, and I, th I just think there were too many potatoes in there. So we probably just should have stuck to a five pound bag. Um, they were still really good. It's just like they, if you notice, I don't know if I took, I'm, I'm sure I took um, footage of it, but they were a little bit like, like the potatoes were a little bit dark. Obviously that wouldn't have happened if we would have made them on the stove but there were also way too many things like cooking on the stove and near the oven area, so that can be challenging as well. I guess another thing you could do is you could mash the potatoes on the stove and keep them warm in a slow cooker, but then you're just dirtying more dishes. I will say that it took me like a good two days to cycle all my dishes through <laughs> the dishwasher, and I also hand wash them as well, so that's always um, a, fun, a fun thing right there. Um, the Instant Pot mac and cheese, I definitely recommend this recipe. One thing that I did do that I don't think I showed in the video just because it was too chaotic was I did thicken this up with a little bit of cornstarch whisked with milk just because the sauce was like a little bit thin. And sometimes when you let it sit, it will thicken up, but for some reason it wasn't thickening up. 
I really do recommend this recipe, um, even if you're not making it for Thanksgiving. It's just a good instant pot mac and cheese recipe. Sausage dressing is one of my favorites. I also made stovetop dressing, which I don't know. I don't think I showed that. It was there was too much going on. Um, but this is my absolute favorite dressing recipe from Ina Garten. Highly recommend it. I've been making it for years and years. Actually, it looks like I've been making it for over 10 years. So love that one. Um, sweet potatoes. I don't know if I talked about the recipe that I used, but this is from New York Times. Um, New York Times Cooking. I actually subscribe to the New York Times Cooking app because I find that they have a lot of really good um, like high quality recipes and I like their cooking tips and everything. So this recipe comes from them. Basically, it's just potatoes, sweetened condensed milk, eggs. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of sweet potatoes, but everyone that likes sweet potatoes seems to like them. So if you like sweet potatoes, definitely recommend that recipe. Um, Adam was saying that he did not like the taste of the gravy this year. I didn't really tell that much of a difference. He said it was kind of bland. I guess I probably could have added more um, flavoring to it. I do typically add some Worcestershire to my gravy because I find that that gives it like a nice, I don't know, like a good savory flavor. Um, but it, it was okay, it was fine. It's, it's gravy, we had plenty, we didn't run out. Um, and then the turkey brine and the roast turkey, again, are Martha Stewart recipes. Definitely recommend this, especially the method with the cheesecloth over the skin. That is the most fail-proof me fail method that I have found to get a really nice crispy brown skin on your turkey. And even though my turkey was really large, it was almost 25 pounds, it was still done within the amount of time that the recipe said. I did check it, um, obviously, in the leg using a meat thermometer. So. We we're good to go there. And then the ham that Adam made turned out really good. I'll see if he can send me the link for the recipe. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of it or anything. I, it was, there was too much, <laughs> too much going on. So I'll see if he can send me the um, link for the ingredients for the glaze, but um, it, tur it turned out really good. And we still actually have a bunch of ham left over. So that will be good for ham sandwiches and ham salad and things like that. Um, I did also make the chocolate mint brownies. Uh, which everyone loves and they were gone ASAP. I think actually after everyone left and took home their leftovers We only had like four or five left and they got eaten out of the fridge within the next couple of days So that was good. We had pumpkin pie and then cake that Adam's mom brought um, and then drinks and chips so yeah, that was pretty much it for everything that we had. So um, overall, I would say a successful Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I always try to think of how I can make it like less chaotic during the time of actually like right before we eat. I haven't quite found that yet um, just because there's so many things going on and there's so many things you have to keep warm. I did, however... Um, get a fair amount of things done the night before so it's not like I really felt like rushed or anything like that It's just I think it's just a lot going on um, But I but again, I was able to make a lot of things the night before so I think that part worked out um, really well, so Overall good. I want to hear how your uh, guys's Thanksgiving went. Did you have any fails? I always love hearing about the fails too because I think it's funny actually um, someone I work with a couple years ago decided to make green bean casserole like from scratch. I think it was like Alton Brown's recipe and it's like just just stick to like the cream of mushroom, you know, canned uh, French onions because um, apparently they tried to like make the crispy onions by themselves and they burned them and then like they had to make a roux for the sauce and it was all... <laughs> It was all a mess, so I love I love hearing about the fails as well because I have had my fair share of those uh, over the meals, over the over the meals, over the years. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Brooklinen. Um, they're having a huge sale right now, and their sheets are my absolute favorite. I absolutely love them. High quality. We have them for all of our beds in our house, and they're just the best. It's just the best when you are looking forward to getting into your bed at the end of a long day and you can just sleep like a baby. Actually, I shouldn't say that because babies don't sleep, as we all know. You can sleep like a husband. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, um, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, a lot of you have asked, am I doing Vlogmas this year? Yes, I'm planning on doing Vlogmas, so uh, I'll see you guys later, probably tomorrow for another video. Bye.